Um, so, uh, I guess just to start, it's been a really long and unique road to get to Disaster Report 4. So, as a fan, I wanted to just start by saying congratulations on both Granzella and Disaster Report 4. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> In the spring of 2011, the Tohoku earthquake happened, and the original PS3 version of Disaster Report 4 was cancelled shortly afterwards. Uh, what was the feeling in the office in the immediate aftermath? Yeah, ma, so no, 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 So, um, he was the sole one to decide, and he's the one that ex um, explained it to the the headquarters and um, explained it to his own staff. Um, but when he did explain it, they weren't necessarily, he wasn't sure if they were disappointed or upset, but they were kind of in a daze. And um, I think they were more along the um, understanding of more like uh, they have the question of what's going to happen now um, since they didn't work on it. After the Tohoku earthquake, uh, did you feel more responsibility in how you portrayed natural disasters in games? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, not really. I, I don't really, um, you know, I'm not really, uh, I guess, self-conscious of putting that kind of aspect into the game. No, oh, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, in the past, you've expressed wanting to make Disaster Report 4 more informative in regards to providing useful information about disasters. Uh, and I know you worked with the Kobe City Fire Department uh to, to accomplish that, do you feel like overall you've managed to improve that aspect of the game? So um, the Kobe Fire Department during the Hanshin Awaji um, earthquake, this was in 1995, um, they contacted Granzilla and offered their help to make the game more informative to people. Um, he had, he, uh, Mr. Kujo was um, actually worried or concerned that people would actually learn or get the wrong idea um, when, th during the, during um, uh, earthquakes or any other natural disasters. And he was more worried about the fact that they might learn something like the wrong um, path to take. So he was, he asked him to help uh, um, look over the the choices that the main character can make during the game. It's not often that you get uh, a second chance to revisit a cancelled game. So putting aside the fact that the PS3 version doesn't exist, uh, do you think that the released version of Disaster Report 4 is significantly improved from the design of what originally would have been? So <laughs> Um, yeah, he does feel like the he says it, it is much better than the PS3 version, um, especially the uh, the Western release is going to be much better because it's the actually the last um, implementation from um, the rest of the world, so it's um, cleaned up a lot. The series uh, portrays disasters very well, uh, but they're usually very distinctly Japanese style disasters, uh, not to sound callous or uncaring. But um, have you ever had thoughts on portraying more typically foreign natural disasters in the context of a video game? So, actually, for the very first um, disaster report, he was actually thinking of making the, the environment um, modeled after LA. Um, because um, during that time, he actually visited E3 during 2000. And um, he couldn't decide between uh, basing it at the the town or the village or the city to be Japan like or American like, and when he visited, he he got the idea that you know he doesn't actually live there. He doesn't know how things work, and that was his first point. And his second point was actually the roads were too large, and which kind of made <laughs> <laughs> which kind of made. Um, and not more um, ba basically to say it's, it wasn't as dramatic as a Japanese road because the Japanese roads are so small, narrow it the feeling of um, being kind of trapped in, within these like narrow streets and um, the danger of that element was kind of um, 
kind of drawn out, so he decided to go to Japan. But that being said, he doesn't have、um, any,、uh, he's actually, you know,、um, does have an intention of maybe one of the future titles, but not yet, of course. It's just the interest of、um, making like a game like、uh, that's themed through a cyclone or like a hurricane.、Uh. Yeah, he does have interest in that, so、um, maybe down the road sometime. <laughs> cool, cool. That's, that's a great answer, actually. The first game takes place on、uh, Stiver Island, which is like a fictitious city, but very grounded, very real feeling. Have you ever considered the idea of a title in the series in a completely fantastical setting, like fantasy or science fiction focused? Or do you like that grounded setting for Disaster Report? He feels that the realistic.、Uh... The realistic、um, city setting is very crucial and like a really big base to、uh, disaster report. So he just, he's never really considered changing it. But he has、um, thought of、uh, going back into the past, maybe 70 years ago, to the war bomb- bombings during.、Um, um, the war bombings during、uh, the, the World War II era. And、um, recreating that sense.、Mm. But he doesn't feel like the futuristic sense of a, fantas- a fantasy world really fits in well with, it, with Disaster Report. Yeah, that, that seems right.、Um, not too surprised to hear that.、Um, uh, on that topic, let me jump ahead a little.、Uh, I've heard that、uh, Kujo san is a fan of、uh, Saito Takao's manga Survival. Are there any foreign disaster movies that have inspired him? Like, possibly any Hollywood ones? So, this is me. Yes, he, he does have,、uh, have some favor. He does get inspiration from Western、uh, movies as well.、Um, particularly, in, he remembers the title or the movie 2012.、Mm-hmm. Is that the correct title for the American version? Yeah, my, my mom loves that movie. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of,、uh, he says a lot of creators in Japan like, get inspiration from、um, Hollywood or、uh, Western movies. And his in particular, he remembers 2012 really well. Do you find it challenging to balance the horrors of disaster with some of the、uh, sometimes humorous tonal elements of the Disaster Report series?、Uh, for example,、uh, some people find it amusing that in raw danger, you can take the chef's hat when he's hanging. まあ、ちょっと行動としては少しおかしい気もするんですけど。Um, so he says, yeah, the, the... <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I think so. But, but, but it's video game. <laughs> yeah.、Uh, so, so the action might seem a little silly, yes. But、um, since he, it is a video game, he feels that it's made for entertainment. So that's where the kind of the fantasy aspect comes in, he says.、Um, the, the little humorous aspect. So he says, since it's a video game and it's meant for entertainment, that you know, it should just go all the way. He sh- we should be able to do things that are kind of, kind of not really re- expected or like、uh, for fun. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think so too. I think that's one of the great things that people like about the series, honestly.、Um, what exactly was the impetus for the Disaster Report series?、Uh, and, and what about the concept of natural disasters compels your creative desires? So, t h i s Okay, so.、Um, a disaster is something that can actually happen within.、Um, Any time frame. It could just happen right now. It could happen tomorrow. We don't know, but it is something that we, it is close to everyone. And he see, thinks that, you know, compared to like waking up and turning into a gang or a samurai or running into zombies or aliens, compared to that, it's more realistic.、Um, so, and as a theme,、um, he thinks that nothing else could come really close to this、uh, feeling. Of、um, a disaster that can happen at any time. And to survive、uh, within this disaster,
he thinks that it's a really um, important theme. It's like a really uh, exciting theme to work on. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Sounds about right. Um, <laughs> uh, ha- have you yourself uh, personally ever been in a situation similar to the scenarios portrayed in the games? Him himself hasn't, but um, he's had friends and um, senpai who are the, your, are your elders mm-hmm. um, have, and he's heard their stories, um, and they've they've always lingered in him. So he feels that um, their their stories are actually portrayed in his games, but he himself hasn't um, experienced any of these natural disasters before. Yeah, wow, that's actually a, a really nice sentiment that the, the feeling that their stories are portrayed in the games. Yeah. Disaster Report 4 features some VR extras alongside the main game. Uh, I noticed that this year, Granzella's New Year's card uh, shows a woman and a boar playing video games in VR. Uh, are you interested in developing full VR or AR games? So one of his goals down the road is to make a fully VR game, but um, VR itself, virtual reality itself, still has some hurdles that it needs to overcome. Um, so for example, it doesn't really support long hours of gameplay yet, and some 3D aspects are still in. He thinks need some work before he, we can actually move on to fully VR, uh, making a game VR. But um, he does feel the necessity of, uh, of experiencing a survival, natural disaster survival game um, in v, uh, VR in one of these in the future. Granzella recently held a really successful Kickstarter for R-Type Final 2. Um, how did the creation of a new R-Type project come about? Idea so back in 2003, he released the R-Type Final, and when he released that, he thought he did everything that he could for a side-scroller shooter, and um, he thought maybe it was that the end, um, side, sorry, side view shooting um, games are at the end of its road. But um, recently, he, um, working with Granzilla and the other type, uh, I'm sorry, working with uh, Disaster Report 4 and other titles, um, and game systems being enhanced and like TVs being widescreen now, he thought he was getting some ideas. And when he was looking through his Twitter, um, he happened to notice some of his fans talking about the art type series and how they wanted to play again. And he realized, reali- realized that there are people who actually still want to play this game. And um, that's when his uh, passion for making this game uh, came alive. And he, they started a Kickstarter, and um, and lo and behold, it it flew off. So that's where he got his inspiration to make the game from. That's great. That's actually really awesome to hear that that like you had new ideas and it came from fans, like both of them, not just one or the other. And you only halfway felt like it or something. So that's how it's nice to hear. He says that he agrees that, you know, it came from both sides and it's, I think he's really excited that it's happening. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I remember during the development of R-Type Final, uh, in an interview a long time ago, you mentioned that the development team was working by the motto, let's make a shooting game that you can play for a hundred years. Um, so it's only been 16 years. I imagine that didn't go too well. えっと、あの、R-Type まあ、16年しか経ってませんから。いかがですか。ま、時代の流れは早くて。He <laughs> 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 
I, th I think so. The older you get, the faster it goes. Uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm sure people will be playing both of these games for, you know, the next 84 and 100 years, respectively. So, I... I... <laughs> he says, thank you. <laughs> um, so, uh, in all seriousness, uh, in the past, uh, he said that Final would be the last R-Type that IREM releases, and not specifically that it would be the last R-Type. So... Uh, although R-Type Command and Command 2 came out afterwards, uh, Final was indeed the last shooting style R-Type that IREM released. Um, I get the impression that even back in 2002, 2003, uh, the creative environment at IREM may have already started becoming somewhat difficult for you. Uh, do you feel like that was the case? <laughs> he said... 2003, I was actually still fine. It's much later that it's it became um, a bit uh, <laughs> difficult to work out. <laughs> in, in regards to IRAM, right? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Maybe I, not I, use I, the yeah. word difficult. <laughs> IRAM is a very good company. He says uh, IRAM is actually a very nice company and they let him do whatever he wanted. So it's a very, very nice company. Yeah, I, I get the impression that it's very amicable, just that like the priorities have changed for IREM. <laughs> so um, actually he wanted to do even more and he wanted to take on more responsibility. But doing that actually puts a lot of risk to the company. Um, and he didn't feel that he should really put it upon IREM to take that responsibility. So he felt that he should make his own company. That's how he started up his own company. Oh, okay. That's super interesting to hear, actually. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I think, different from the impression I see online about how things went down. But that's, that's, yeah. that's really nice to hear that it did go down like that and not in a worse way. He also said that IREM, you know, really respected his uh, decision to um, take the risk on his own and um, uh, let him start up a new company. Well, that's great. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's just great. Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm surprised, but that's that's a happy thing to hear. Uh, so uh, last question about R-Type. Um, in some international releases of R-Type Final, uh, there's a track by the Blue Man group uh, in the game instead of a track by Shina Heriku. Uh, were you involved in that song selection, and how did that come to happen? So, um, Shina he Hekiru-san? Uh, oh, whoops, my, my mistake. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> so, um, okay. Okay. Uh, um, so her song actually um, needed a special rights to use in uh, the Western release. So, when the company that was um, actually working with uh, Granzella at that time, um, help them choose the song that would replace that. Um, but them themselves did not, um, they were, weren't involved in choosing the song, but they were involved in putting the song in. So that was the last one on our type. Uh, so next up, uh, Steambot Chronicles, uh, Bumpy Trot in Japan. <laughs> um, so uh, f for Disaster Report 4, uh, you were able to revisit the cancelled PS3 version as a basis for development. Uh, in Steambot Chronicles' case, if you ever wanted to make a second one, would you want to revisit the cancelled Steambot Chronicles 2 for PS3 as a basis? Or do you feel you've grown enough as a person and as a creator that you'd mostly want to begin from scratch? Um, so for Steambot Chronicles 2, he feels that um, there is a sense of him that you know, he didn't complete it, so he would like to go back and complete it one of these days. Mm, as opposed to starting as, again yeah, from exactly, scratch, yeah. like he'd want to, okay, yeah, cool, thank you. Um, and last Steambot Chronicles thing, um, uh, in both Steambot Chronicles and Disaster Report, there are a lot of choices that let the player do outright bad things or that lead to sad or quite dark situations. Um, can you tell us a bit about your mindset in including these sorts of moments? <laughs> so um, he says that that sad or dark ending is actually what he would 
wants to make. It's the part he enjoys making almost. <laughs> In that sense, do you like surprising people with that? Like they, you know, you usually expect a happy ending or some such from media. Does that does that satisfy you to pull the rug out from people? From under people, pardon? So the no intention de, I know, yeah, by Hito, co odoro casarino was he is. Like a co, I know, co, stacaraco, carpet, or skin, or the hand. So people tend to think, or maybe, you know, he doesn't want people to think that he has a bad personality, but、um, he enjoys saying the, the, the meaner comments or like the meaner.、Um, Lines the characters would have to say, and his staff will always tell him, Maybe you are that type of person. But he thinks that、um, those kinds of lines are actually more hu- humanistic, they're more、um, very humane, and like he feels like he thinks that that's the essence of hum- basically a, a being a human. So he, he enjoys his、um, kinds of moments, but.、Um, He also thinks that、uh, surprise is a very big element to a game, so it's very important to put it in a game.、Mm-hmm. No, I definitely agree.、Um, so, personally,、uh, I've only ever seen pictures of Kazuma Kujo wearing sunglasses, and I think if you wear sunglasses everywhere, people are going to think you're a bad person. Sunglasses. <laughs> 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 九条さんの写真はあのいつもサングラスをかけてるので、はい、サングラスを常にかけてると悪い人だと思われるんじゃないですかと、うん、そうですねだからは初めてそのサングラスせずに会った人が「え思ってたより優しい人なんですね」って言われます<笑>実際に。He says, yeah, I know. He's, and,、um, he's like, whenever I actually meet someone and take off my sunglasses, They, they、uh, tend to say that, oh, you're not such a bad person. And they get really. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, and they're really、um, um, surprised because of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes sense.、Um, <laughs> uh, in, in all seriousness, though, I've, I've heard people、uh, in North America and Europe describe Disaster Report、uh, and, well, and Bumpy Trot as well,、uh, Steambot Chronicles, sorry, as series that have very human interactions. So. I, I do think that, to- that assessment totally sounds right based on what you're saying as well. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome.、Uh, <laughs> at Irem and Granzella,、uh, you worked on a lot of content for PlayStation Home and made some of the most impressive stuff for it.、Uh, a lot of people in North America and Europe remember PlayStation Home very badly, but I get the impression you were a big fan of it.、Uh, could you tell us what about that format inspired your affection for it? プレイしてくれる人の様子を直接見ることができて、そう、あの、he really liked the aspect where you can actually see the players playing from the dev side and it was kind of like a live,、um, like a, he felt like a togetherness from with the dev and the player and like if he felt like they were creating the game together, so he felt that as an entertainment uh, um, console that it was it was really、uh, There, like it was, it was something that would probably take off, but that's how he felt about the home. As of today,、uh, Disaster Report, Raw Danger, and Steambot Chronicles aren't available for people to buy outside of Japan,、uh, and Disaster Report 3 and City Shrouded and Shadow never released outside of Japan.、Uh, do you have any plans to try re releasing or releasing some of your more notable games in the future? Because at this moment,、uh, he can't really say for sure. That's okay. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs>、um, Granzella opened with around seven employees.、Uh, how big is it now? We have around 35 now. Oh, cool. That's, that's pretty small for a company making Disaster Report 4. And he says, yes, it's still very small. So he has a lot of help from outside、uh, artists to help him. So,、uh, in the past,、uh, it's been expressed that the name Granzella was name, came from. R Type Tactics 2,、uh, the Granzella Revolutionary Army.、Um, I was wondering if that sentiment of revolution was an aspect in the choice of the name, or if there were other meanings to it that might not be obvious to people outside the company. Yeah, Yes, he does、um, have the revolution kind of in mind.、Um, even their, their slogan、um, says, I think, something. Revolution. Revolution. 
。娯楽味覚ね。ごそ。ごそ。そ<笑>な,なんて言えばいいんだろう、英語だと。<笑>難しいな、えっ、ー、と。ごそか。I think I might have to get back to you on that word, but、um, in, okay. they, they do promote revolution in their slogan. So、um, he, he says it's, it is a part of their,、uh, their naming、um, history. Cool, cool. That's, even if it wasn't, like, Granzella is a really cool name, so it would have been, would have been fine, I'm sure, but that's, that's awesome to hear that that's part of it. グランゼラ自体がすごいかっこいい名前なんで別にそうじゃなくてもよかったんですけど聞けてよかったです。<笑> If I'm not mistaken, it's been quite a while since you've released a game internationally. Is there anything you'd like to express to international fans? あそうですねあの。これからはなるべくこう。So he says,、uh, Granzilla as a whole company、um, uh, is intending to release more games. All of their... 全部って言っていいんですかそれともほとんど。<laughs> Most of their games <laughs> towards in their international audience. So、um, he says, please be on the lookout and uh,、um, help uh, look forward to their games. Thank you for making the time for this interview.、Uh, I really appreciate it.、Um, Thank you. <laughs> 海外にグランゼーラのゲームのことをすごく詳しい人がいるのは嬉しい。すごく嬉しい。It says he's really happy to hear that he's there's someone、um, the Western audience that's so、uh, in tune and like informative of the Grand Zilla and their titles. And he's really happy to have met you. Thanks again so much for、uh, making the time, both like on the Nipponichi side and、uh, Kazuma、uh, Kujo san.、Um, I, I just really appreciate it. Like, it was really nice of you to, to reach out and offer this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.